Hi again, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to continue in our series of video tutorials about building responsive websites with this video where I'm going to show you two or three tricks that will really make your responsive design workflow so much better. We're going to talk about a few very common things that happen while you're building a website to be responsive. Now in this demonstration, I'm using a template that is responsive. It's responsive because it has three breakpoints and typically I'll make my breakpoints at 1200, 768, and 320. You don't have to stick to that. You can have more than three. You can have as many as 25, actually, although I've never done that. Uh, typically, three, five, or six, somewhere in that range is, is enough to make your, res your uh, website responsive for most devices. But for these demonstrations, I'm keeping it simple at just these three breakpoints. Uh, these are probably the minimum ones you want, though. You want at least your default size, which is going to be the largest, in my case, 1200. And you're probably going to want a 768 and a 320 because those are the most common tablet and smartphone sizes. But again, you can add more. In this video, I want to show you a couple of really cool tricks that'll help you. So let's look at some objects. First of all, we're looking at a website that's made up of a lot of layers that have relative horizontal sizing, a lot of images, some menus, and some text. So I'm clicking F5 to preview it in a browser. And you can see as we scroll down, let me uh, pull it in here a little bit. As we scroll down, we get that sticky layer, which is kind of fun that very top layer up here where the menu is, follows us as we scroll down. We also have a parallax effect. I don't know if you caught that, but that parallax right here, this, this is a layer that has a nice three-dimensional parallax effect that we're using. And it's just, it's a really nice looking uh, template. But I wanna show you how it was made and, and how it was made responsive with some of the techniques that we can use in 90 Second Website Builder. So this is the full 1200 pixel desktop version of the website. Notice as I shrink it down and we go to the tablet size, big difference here. Notice the difference in the photos, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But one of the advantages of doing responsive design in 90 Second Website Builder is you as the designer get to decide what images show, if they show, and how they show. That doesn't happen in conventional responsive design. Online platforms don't offer that feature, but notice that we get to control what images show and exactly where. So this is the tablet size of this. Now let's scroll, um, or rather let's uh, shrink it down to the smartphone version, watch what happens. And you'll see we have a considerably different view because this is gonna look better on a smartphone like this. Look what happens here. We still keep our parallax effect and we still have our sticky header, but it's really uh, kind of a fun website. So let's stretch it back, watch what happens. And by the way, in the tablet version, let's see what happens down here. There's our parallax, some more text, and our footer. Now, let's start to deconstruct this. I'm gonna close the preview and let's look at the project itself. First of all, let's talk about this header up here. You'll notice that I have a menu. This is called a CSS menu. And in the full version, the 1200 pixel variation of this page, it's working just fine because it fits fine. In my 768, which I'll click here, now we're looking at the tablet version of this page. It works just fine. But as I was designing this, I recognized that this menu is gonna be way too wide when I get down to the 320. So even moving it over here, you can see it's going to be way wider for the 320. So here's where it needs to sit for the 768. But just by eyeballing it, so to speak, I can see that's gonna be a problem when I get down there. So there's a couple of things we can do. Now watch what happens when we go to the 320. You'll see what the end result was. This is that exact same menu, but you'll notice it has a different orientation. It's the exact same object as this menu. It's not a different menu, it's being shared. So you may be wondering then why is it a different orientation and how does it know to do that? I'm gonna show you. If we double click on this menu, the CSS menu, one of the things that I did in the style is I chose the layout mode to be responsive. That's the key phrase right there. So if I would have used horizontal, I would have not have been able to do this trick. So I need this menu to be responsive. What that does is that allows the same menu object to have multiple variations. So it can have this vertical view in the 320 and it can have a horizontal view in the bigger variations automatically without having to make a whole new menu. You may wonder, how does it know which variation to go vertical and which variation should be horizontal? Well, that's also very easy to do. 
if you look at the tab right here, RWD stands for Responsive Web Design. And this is where we can set our CSS menu's breakpoint. We want this to respond or change at the 320 breakpoint. We could put anything in here we want, any one of our breakpoints, but I'm having it respond at the 320. Okay, so basically we've made it responsive here. We told it where to respond at which breakpoint. And because we did that, now this same menu item can be shared across multiple variations, but in different positions. And that's really a great feature. Here it is in the 1200 pixel page. If we double click on it, you're seeing the same menu item. There it is, the style is responsive and it breaks at 320. So that's how we do that with a CSS menu. There are other menus and other objects that are responsive, but in this case, we're working with the CSS menu. Here's another trick you may or may not have noticed. This text right here that says my photography is pretty big. It works great for the full page. It works great for the tablet size. Fits just fine. But you can see by looking at it, when we click to the 320, again, we're gonna have problems because this is just too big. And yet, when we do, the reason it's working fine is because the font is smaller. Now the only way that I could use this exact same text object in all three variations and have the font be smaller in this one is because I told the software to make this text object responsive. Here's how we do that. I'm going to right click on it. Notice that it's selected, so I'm not double clicking. I'm going to right click on this and I'm going way down to the bottom here where it says object properties. So I'm bringing up the properties of this text object, and there's a very important checkbox right here. Enable responsive fonts. That means when this is checked, I can use different font sizes in different breakpoints, but with the same text object. I'm not making multiple text objects that I have to hide. This will serve all three variations, but different font sizes. So that means in this variation, I've got the font set at 18. I'm going to bring it up here so you can see that. Here's my font set at 18. And yet when I go to the 720, it's the exact same object, by the way, but it's set at 32. And the same is true for the 1200. Again, I can only do that because I told the software to make this text object responsive. And you do that by checking that box. Those are two really, really good tricks. Here's another thing. You'll notice that the um, picture layout changed here. And I did that because I can. That's not something that the software decides for you. This is one of the advantages of using what I call controlled response, where you as the designer get to control where pictures show. So you'll notice in the 1200 variation of this, I have small pictures spread out here. You may be wondering, how does the software know to make these what size they are? When I click here, you know, this one's much larger, this one's much larger, and this one's about the same, I think. So how does the software know to put them in these positions? Well, it actually doesn't. That's where I come in as the designer and I put these where I want them. I just think they look better like this on a tablet. Conventional responsive design does not allow you this luxury. You would have to live with wherever the device moves these objects and sometimes they get stacked in a weird way. But 90 Second Website Builder lets you control where these objects are going to land in each page variation. That's the great advantage of being able to create and design each breakpoint. And in the 320, I did something even more radical, something you cannot do with any other web design platform. Any other responsive design does not let you, let you do this. But in the 320 variation of this website, I didn't want to use these pictures at all. And so what I did, if you go to the 320, you'll see they don't exist. They aren't in my design. Now, how did I do that? Well, I actually hid them, and I'll show you in a minute how we do that. So this is where my object manager is really important. I'm actually going to bring this up into the screen a little bit better and move the camera so you can see what I'm doing down here. This is the object manager, and I'm currently in the 1200 breakpoint variation of my design, and you can see that all of these represent the objects on this page, every object on this page and in every variation. They're all checked, they're all visible. If I go to the 320, you'll see that my object manager changes a little bit. I have some boxes that are unchecked. And the reason for that is because I've hidden some things, some things I don't want to show in the 320. For example, I don't want to show layer three and anything that's inside it for that matter. So since this is layer three and all of these 
items are inside layer 3, you can see the hierarchy this way. Then by hiding layer 3, I'm actually going to hide everything inside. I don't have to I don't have to uncheck all these. It will know not to show these because it's not showing the layer or any of its contents. So I've chosen to hide layer 3. I've also chosen to hide some text. Let me show you that. So let's go back to the uh, default size. And I want you to pay attention to this text right here. So I like the way this text looks in the 1200. I like the way it looks in the 768. But I didn't want this text to show in the 320 because it's just too busy. So let's go to the 320 and you'll see when we go to that area of the page, that text is invisible. Here it is right here. In fact, let me temporarily make it visible for you so you can see what I did. If I showed it, it would be all scrunched. But what I did was I moved it over all the way to the edge so that it doesn't bleed over into the other uh, breakpoints. And then I simply turned it off in the object manager. Let me go move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. So here's that those text objects. If I click these on, they'll show in this breakpoint. If I click these off, they won't. I don't need those in my 320. And again, I have full control over that. What I'm telling you is you have control over what shows, if it shows, and where it shows by using this object manager. It's very powerful. Another good idea is as you're designing and you begin to hide more objects, if it gets a little confusing for you, 90 Second Website Builder has a good little trick for that too. If you go up to the View menu, you can check this box that says Render Hidden Objects. That just simply means show the objects that are going to be hidden in this variation. So if I check this, you can see that the software is actually showing me what's hidden. It's kind of grayed out. I can't do anything with these objects because they're hidden. But at least I can see while I'm in design mode what is hidden. And so that's kind of a good trick. If this gets in your way or bothers you, you can just toggle it off and you can unrender the hidden objects if they're in the way. But sometimes that becomes very, very convenient as you're troubleshooting. Sometimes what happens is this. I'll show you an example of why this is really good. Sometimes what happens is your text objects, you know, before you've moved them into place, they might be sticking out over here like this. And then you go to hide them. Well, that's all well and good, except that since this object is actually hanging over the 320 edge, it's going to mess with our breakpoint. It needs to be moved over in here. And if you are trying to test your website and you see that it's the 320 is just not working right, or you've got extra space, something's wrong, you can just go up here and click this box, Render Hidden Objects, and it will show you, oh, I've got a hidden object that's out of place. It's, it's outside of the breakpoint. So even though it's hidden, I need to move it out of the way. So I would turn it on temporarily and move it back into place and then hide it so that it's not hanging outside of the breakpoint. You always want to keep your objects inside the breakpoint so you don't create any of that extra space. So again, we're talking about having the flexibility to hide or show objects within breakpoints and the ability to render them here as you're in design mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. So that's probably enough information for this particular part of the responsive design series. The point of this video is to make sure that you understand that you have full control over what shows on your responsive breakpoints, what shows in each page variation, if it shows and where it shows. So part of it is a design decision, like how big you make these images and if they show and where they show. Part of it is mechanical, knowing how to turn something into a responsive object, such as the CSS menu, making sure that you select the responsive mode and you decide where it's going to break. These three major tips alone will help you in your design workflow as you're making responsive websites. And there's more as we continue talking about responsive web design in 90 Second Website Builder.